The skin is the outer covering of the animal and human body. It protects the delicate organs of the body from harmful organisms and also prevents loss of life, sustaining the body fluids. The skin is critical to a person's survival, its health conditions as well as personalities. Since creation, the human body has always been a source of fascination as well as inquiry. Though the fascination cuts across races and gender, women are much more concerned about the condition of the skin, which has been the attraction for most men. Skin beautification for women as well as skin care has become an obsession for many across Africa. In society, today's society is very visual. People are very short-term, very short-lived, and they just go by what they see. Even though a healthy person is by the glow of their skin, the skin is just very important. The skin is the largest organ of our body. It covers such a large area, so you must care for it. Despite the attention given to the skin, there are also skin problems, diseases, conditions that affect the skin's color, texture, and function. As a result of poor awareness campaigns, misconceptions and misunderstandings about its true nature, majority of the victims and the general public do not understand the condition. One morning when I was getting ready for school, my mom came into my room and said, hey, what's that on your neck? Because I had the first patch somewhere here. So I said, what's that? Maybe it will be maybe so bubbles, I didn't uh, remove it or what. So I just did like that. She said, no, it's still there. So I got a mirror and I saw it. When I noticed the white patch, I I concluded it was eczema. That was the commonest skin disease that was similar with what I had. So the, the, the patch was not that big then, so I concluded it was eczema. So I didn't feel that. I said, well, I will deal with it. Just get, go and get some few over the counter drugs and deal with it. When I saw it, I thought it was a leprosy. You know, I called my husband and showed it to him. He said that you don't know about it. Nothing. I thought it was a wound. Then I saw a doctor. I said I should go to the village, inside the village, and go to any of the abalis people to get me to give me native drugs to take. Maybe it's something for my forefather. father. I said okay. No, I observed two spots actually. One was here and the other one was here on the right. And I thought it could be a spoiled fungus infection or probably something like that. Initially when it was my lips I didn't think um it was one of those reactions. I just felt there's something that I ate. It was, it was when it got to my forehead, I saw a dot, I saw another dot. That um, I decided to see a doctor. And then from there, I decided to go to my cousin's house and get into his house. I saw their doctor, you know, their family doctor who... I saw their family doctor who just looked at it and, you know, he just said, this is not happening. And immediately he said that I knew I was in for some kind of... Um, not easy condition to handle. I started going to the hospital about three weeks after I noticed the first part. When I when I was when the teacher made us understand that that might not be asthma, we thought it was asthma. I think what the doctor did was to to kind of he did this uh, diagnosis by elimination. Is it this? He would test for that. He said no, it is not. Is it this? No, it is not. And. Then, so when they are running the test, they will pinch me with a needle on my fingers and on those patches. To, and they, they ask me the sensation. 
the, the doctor asked me to close my eyes and I closed my eyes and he would just pinch me gently. Say what happened? I said hey, you pinch me with I think that's a needle. And then he would pinch me with something like the tip of a head. I say ah, it's a pinch, but I'm not sure this one is a needle. So he was sure I could feel the pains and uh, and I had complete feelings at those places and the test for the presence of the bacteria was negative too. So he assured my dad that it was not leprosy, but they didn't tell me. Maybe so that I wouldn't panic. So I have to go home and meet my mother. So when I see, when my mother sees it, he said that I should not uh, bother myself. That, uh, in, in, that's for their own side, that you get some people that have it. Say I'm not from your own side, I'm from my father's side. I don't want it at all. I asked her if there is any native medicine that can cure it. She said that she don't know, she don't have, you know. When I tried, 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 no way. So I have to go back to Harvey Road again. After six months, I see that it's spreading all over my body, from this leg to this place, from that place to my mouth. My hand, my legs. My hair. From there, my daddy said, This one is another thinness. It's not for my father, father, that no one of his family that have it. I found that that's what most people go through. Maybe because I didn't get the help I needed from the hospital. You understand? Because I wanted somebody to explain to me what this thing is. And it was just like it's a normal thing. I didn't understand it's a normal thing when I am black and I'm turning white. I needed further explanation. I needed you know, an in-depth explanation to it, and it didn't come, so I was so worried. I, I started getting worried even before the stairs and everything, because as I wake up, I see a new patch, it progresses so fast. As a result of poor awareness campaigns, misconceptions, and misunderstandings about the true nature of vitiligo condition abound. What is vitiligo? Well, vitiligo, I would say, is a medical condition that causes smooth white patches on the skin of individuals. These white patches are more common on the face, the limbs, whether the hands or the feet, and gradually it spreads to involve other parts of the body. Now, if you consider the importance of uh, uh, physical attractiveness or physical features to attraction, you could see the kind of problem people even with, with Lego go through. First and foremost, uh, their self-image is dented. They see themselves from the negative perspective. And this is coupled with a lot of stigma that is associated with such skin coloration. Social stigma, self, family, all these things have their negative consequences to the person. Whenever I go out, I become a film to people. You know, even when I go to church, I'm a Catholic. There was a time it will reach, they said that you have to shake your neighbor. You know? There was a time I went, uh, we went to um, one program. So my neighbor that are kneeling down near me, we are standing in the same place. I bring out my hand to shake her. The lady have to withdraw her hand. You know, I was shocked. I was shocked. I need her. I call God. Father, this thing is not on my body. After how many years you created me? Getting married, have children. Then this thing, just a dot spread all over my body like this. I want you to remove it from me. Look at how people are just running from me. If you see my skin before, I have a very nice skin. Please, God, I want to. You know, the thing disturbed me that particular day, if not that is in the church. After that, even the lady herself was worried. After the whole, after the church, she has to call me, mommy, come, mommy, come. I turn, I turn, I say, what do you want? He said, please, let us shake. I say, ah, don't bother yourself. Even if it is me, when I see this type of thing, I will feel somehow, you know. He said that I should not be annoyed. I say, no, I'm not annoyed. You are not the one that do it to me. I'm not annoyed. So after that, in the church today, if I go to church, I don't bring up to shake people unless 
you are, you call me, say, ah, auntie, bring your hand, let us shake. I give you my hand. But to say that, turn like this, you know, shake hand. I don't do it because some people, when they see you, they will just feel that you carry, even the person that carry is, they can respect that person more than this one they are seeing physically. At the condition, it was so much so that at times I will meet people that I think should know me on the road and maybe I want to be friendly and they just, maybe, I don't I wouldn't know whether they, they pretend not to know me or they wouldn't recognize me. And you know, then, yeah, it was painful. It was painful. So it was like a change of identity, sort of. On one occasion, when I was commuting from my house to the school, I went to the park and, you know, there were some, some passengers there already. And I entered the back seat of these uh, wagon uh, cars, uh, station wagon. Then the next passenger came. I, I sat at the A stream. The next passenger came and sat at the, uh, at the other A stream. The, I think the, uh, it, was, it was supposed to be four passengers. And you know, that thing is supposed to be for three, but they carry four. So all of you have to be so close together. Then the next person came and sat near the other person. So just a little space between myself and the dead occupant who, now, who is now staying in the middle. Then this young lady came in and they says it's only the back seat. She wanted to come in and she went back. No, I can't stay in the back. Why can't you stay in the back now? Let's go. I can't stay in the back. If you want to stay in the back, go to the back. Then the driver said, Ah, stay in the back. Okay. She said she cannot pass. Then the driver was okay, asking the, the other occupant to now shift to my side so that the young lady will now take his position. The guy refused. Said, Okay, that if the girl said she cannot pass through that place. He came down and asked her to come in. The girl refused. You know, you can't imagine the drama. So, one man that was sitting in front now got down and came into the, the car and sat beside me. Then the girl went to the front. In fact, I've not, I've not exchanged this information with anybody. And that was the worst stigmatization I've received because. This one, this one was, you know, it was played as a drama before me. Uh, the other ones, it will be, the other ones we are soft, but this one was blatant enough. But then what could I do? Well, I felt bad, but naturally I'm a strong person. There's no, I don't think there's any situation I can't live with. If I'm just alive, naturally I'm a strong person. I felt like crying. But I'm not I'm not big with tears. But in India it's quite common. People have it. And uh, because of the difference, it is also very common in Brazil and in Africa also. The only thing is that it becomes too prominent because of the color of our skin, which is dark. Whereas the Europeans, they have it also. Because it makes no difference to them because their skin is already white. And especially it becomes prominent when they go under the sun, it becomes red. That's the problem starts. People called me different type of things just because of this. The last time I went for an interview, I had about a job. I went for an interview. I, in my mind, I know that, yes, I've already got to the job. But I didn't, they said they would call me back for the results. I didn't hear from there. I need to call, I need to go back to the place and ask the, the HR that I didn't hear any information from them. He said the white man said they can't take me. They can't that means I, I'm not worthy to work in the place. I said why? He said that's because of the color I have in my body. That I can't serve a girl, a white girl with my hand. I lost the job. I feel bad. But that's because I don't have a job, and the condition I I was in that period, I need a job. That's because I just lost my mom, 
everything was summer hard. Sometimes when I call little children to buy me something outside, say, ah, that auntie that I have to call up. That auntie that I have hot water body. Oh, I don't want to go that message. So then they will be saying it in my presence, so I will list, I will know that they are calling me hot water. Ah, I will feel bad again, I will just go inside. Sometimes I will not even eat for a day, just because of the word I had. As the first relationship I had, the guy was a banker, he was okay by me. The day of my birthday, that's a day to my birthday, he promised me a gift and he said, he don't like anything like skates. I said, yeah, but I would prefer him to buy me something like chosen. He said, no, that he needs skates. I said, okay. I don't want to tell him why I don't like to put on skates. So when he bought the skirt, I said, okay, I will put it on. He said, no, I should put it on in, in his present. I should go and change. When I changed, I came out. <laughs> I was afraid. I even saw that. I even thought that something is happening. The way he just scream out. That what? What is this? Sir, is, what is the problem? Is anything wrong? Is it not okay? Sir, so I have this thing in my leg. Ah, oh. I said, I'm good down now. I'm not the one that caused all this in my body. I, I didn't create myself. He said, ah, ah, no, no, that I disappointing. I said, ah, ah. just because of this. The relationship does cut like that. When it's friend, any of you that I even called me a fool now, I thought, what is the problem? But this guy saw your hand before he came to you. I said, yeah, but I show you some parts of my body. Body and he said we can't uh, skip the relationship. So I said they said okay, no problem that God will be my own. But I felt bad. I felt very very bad. Very disappointed that somebody that I love. But that's because of this. Anybody that asks me or sometimes I have double mind. My mind see go back that if I go into a relationship again, maybe something like this may happen. So I just want to be on my own. Sometimes I think. Am I going to marry in life? That is the question I always ask myself every morning. That is not the first time, that is not the second time. I have to take the type of people that come to me for marriage. But I know that they are not my husband. If they, if they are my husband, no matter anything that is in my body, they will be there for me. I, going out was um, so difficult. Um, choosing what to wear. To choose what to wear was so difficult because it's like at a point took um, control. You know, tells me when to go out, tells me what to wear. Even at times, just me whom to see, I wouldn't want to see. You understand? Because I, I, I want to get to see you and I'm feeling what is going to be his reaction now. And then I will just give one excuse or the other and go. The foremost thing I want is a kind of effort to find out exactly what's the cause of this. Because, you know, if you have a problem and you know the root of your problem, uh, even if you, it is a problem that, in quotes, has no uh, uh, solution in sight, it will make it easier for you to cope with the situation. Okay, there is no known cause of vitiligo. However, so many theories have been advanced as to what could lead to vitiligo. There are certain things in the skin that give the skin the color. These things we call pigments. There are about four pigments in the skin, but the major determinant of the skin color is called melanin. And if for any reason there's a problem with this melanin, either as a result of um, destruction, which could come due to autoimmune diseases. The diseases we refer to as autoimmune are those diseases where the body, the self-defenses in the body, cease to see that part of the body as itself and tends to mount a fight against that part of the body, thereby destroying the body. So some of these autoimmune disorders are things like diabetes, some have the thyroid diseases. So you find out that some people who have these disorders, you know, have um, antibodies 
that have destroyed some parts of the body. And vitiligo tends to coexist with some of these autoimmune diseases. No, not at all. The disease entity is not contagious. The skin color, the depigmentation in the skin is not transferable. Like I said, it is something that is happening inside the body, so nobody can contact it. Place me on drug called uh, uh, melodine tablet. So when I was using that melodine tablet, a year, two years, it's still coming out, spreading, spreading, spreading. So instead of the melodine tablet to cure me, it went and spoiled my eyes. I noticed that I cannot read without space while I don't have bystand before. I stopped the medicine. So I continue looking for solution. I didn't stop. I refuse to take allopathic medicines because they damage the liver. Because they have a very strong side effects. Which is, I will never advise anybody to take allopathic medicines. Well, I wouldn't say that um, it has a cure, but the disease progression can be modulated. There is no way. It is still better than heart problems or other problems people are having. As far as I'm concerned, I'm okay. I, I was so worried. You know, I, I feel if I come to you to talk to you about what we do, I feel that you'll be looking at my skin. The first thing I try to do is to tell you that I wasn't born like this. You know, this is something that just happened. You know, trying to give, um, even where it wasn't necessary, I, at the point I couldn't just uh, continue with that. I needed to leave. Looking for people to share experiences with, meeting with people. Even though I was looking out for people to encourage me, you know, people that have been living with it for a while, I ended up encouraging and them, helping them out, supporting them. Supporting them in the sense, you know, encouraging them to move on, to live positively. Um, you know, I started gathering people, you know, collecting numbers, we talk on phone, we, at the point I tried to bring them together, let's meet, let's sit down, let's talk. And um, while doing that, I came to the understanding that the major thing we, that we needed at the point is awareness. The general public stared. They make all the comments, they segregate, they stigmatize because they are ignorant of this condition. That, that was when I started thinking, I said, it's, it's good for us here to have something of our own for Africans because we understand us. We know our environment. We know how we feel, for how we, we react to things and the best way to handle us. You understand? So in all of this, trying to put this together, Vitiligo Support and Awareness Foundation, acronym VITSAV, was born you know, create awareness to let the next person, to let the general public understand that this vitiligo is a, a skin condition. Vitiligo is um, something that can happen to anybody, anytime, irrespective of how well you can pray, irrespective of um, how informed you are. And then um, to let people know that it's actually something you can prevent. The symptoms is that you have the condition already. The foundation is working towards having a resource center where you come in and you get every other thing you want to know about this condition and possibly related diseases or conditions. You know, you get the books, you get the journals, you get the, anything you want to know about the condition. Yes. We are still going to be working with the medical community because we are supporting the ongoing research. We want to encourage new ones. We want to encourage our, I believe strongly that the solution to vitiligo, there will be a solution to vitiligo if we look further in Africa. We are so blessed with herbs, irrespective of where we are. Research is ongoing out there. I don't know how far research is in Africa. I don't want to say there is none, but I don't know. I encourage you to look at the website of Vitiligo Support and Awareness Foundation or the National Vitiligo Foundation for the most accurate and up-to-date information.